Kyle the Pug. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Professor Pug's Kennel Cast, Season 2, Episode Number 3, and I get it. I absolutely get it. It's been three weeks since we recorded, and everybody's like, Kyle, where have you been, man? Professor, where have you been? Well, as you can currently see, uh, over to my left, and it's probably like to your guys' right or wherever you're, uh, wherever you're going, like, guess what, whatever direction it's, I guess, the camera's pointing, I got a new PC. A couple of weeks ago and I had to go through so much hassle setting this up like I swear to god it it was it was like long story short it was basically it almost didn't cost an arm and a leg but I felt like it did just like setting up this PC and oh my god it was just absolutely ridiculous <laughs> like the amount of phone calls I had to make the discord calls I had to make it was just holy crap it was ridiculous it was basically so so awful it was uh but but we made it we made it towards the end of the journey and yeah the new pc is finally up so um yeah expect a lot more podcasts you know one show a day every single week so um yeah i'm uh very happy to have this new pc set up uh i'm gonna try to uh stream off of pc which i will be doing that Saturday, by the way, because if you guys are seeing this live right now, I will be live on Saturday with my first ever Nintendo stream. What are we going to, uh, what are we, what are we going to play? Well, we're going to do some Super Mario 64 on stream. We'll be at it for a couple hours on there. So Matt was saying the test stream looked good. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was running through the uh, test. If you guys haven't seen the uh, test stream I did earlier today, definitely go check that out. Yeah, because I have the new overlay, new bits ready to go. Yeah, bits, hosts, you know, raids, donos, follows, new subs. I think I do need to add a couple more things, though, here and there with uh, Chaotix help, and I think we should be good to go. I think I've... I've helped me set this all up. Yeah, he what he uh, helped me basically helped me through the uh, tutorial, and, um, yeah, I feel like I have, like, a, a knack for it now. I actually know how to set things up, finally, with the... Uh, because I have the webcam. I didn't put that in yet, but I think maybe well once we get the webcam going on the PC, we'll definitely try to get that going. And um and of course the recent follower, Donos, you know, bit all that other stuff. <laughs> it just so means he could break it faster. <laughs> I could definitely break it faster now, just like could <laughs> But um <laughs> anyways, for those who don't know who I am. I am, of course, Professor Pug, a.k.a. Kyle the Pug. You can call me whatever you want. I apologize for that long intro, but I had to explain myself, so now you guys are basically up to speed, and I'm happy you guys are. So, that being said, um, we, of course, are joined 90% of the time every single week, and I say 90% of the time because, like, at this point, usually he either is off work or he's going to work on, on, on this night. So, what's up, Pink? How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Just relaxing. Yeah, you're relaxing. You're on that Fortnite grind. Yeah, you're trying to find Wolverine, but he's finding you instead. What's going on with that? Uh, he can spawn in like 25, 30 different locations, and usually ends up, I can't find him, but somebody else can, and they kill me. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I am playing his Blade, so. Well, there you go. At least you got something going. <laughs> At least you got that, so... uh what you been up to uh, the past three weeks? I know, uh, I know, it's been a while since we recorded, but um, what's been going on with you, man? Like life-wise, like with work. You have any fun stories you want to share? Uh, uh, the latest one is we're in the middle of a cleanup. The um, crane on. Luckily, it was the ship and not our fault, thank God. Mm -hmm. But uh, crane was moving lumber off the ship and it hit a rail and dump like four or five bundles of lumber into the river. Oh my god, that must have been awful. But luckily they're uh, treated lumber, so they float. So we just have to okay. grab them all. Yeah, I was going to say, if those suckers sunk into the ocean or the water, oh yeah, good luck getting all those out of there. Yeah, no, <laughs> getting like some scuba watertight, gear just... Uh, treated. Yeah, it's the watertight treated one, so they're floating. It's just, so, um, I think it's uh, like, what, only five bucks or something like that? Yeah, it's five bucks on Steam, so it's, it's definitely you know, worth it for me. I wonder if you can gift that. You probably could. 
You pro I think I think there was an option on Steam that said you can actually gift uh, stuff for uh, two people. I don't know. I have to go back and look. I have I have Steam ready to go though. Well, not re ready to go, but like I have a lot of stuff I can stream off my PC though too. Oh my! I'm just like so excited right now. I'm like literally like thinking like my future streams like you know Saturday and then beyond that. It's just oh, it's gonna be insane. I'm. I'm super happy. I'm in a very good mood right now. So, um, and speaking of, you know, games that I do want to stream, um, I'm having a lot of fun with uh, Super Mario Brothers uh, 35. And I think we did talk about this. And if you guys don't know, we were talking about this with Penguin before the show started. I explained this to him. It's basically Mario Battle Royale, where you're playing Super Mario Brothers, but you're going up against uh, 35 other people. That's right, you're going up against 35 other people, and basically you clear levels, and all you just gotta do is survive. Yeah, all you have to do is basically survive. That's... You could, I mean, like, when the when the time... I guess when there's, like, less and less people left, the time wouldn't, like, when there's at least, you know, five people left, and you're including you, the you know how the music can kind of go... Da -da 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 you kind of, you know that sound effect. Yeah, so, um... That if that you hear that, that means the timer will start going faster and faster if there's five people left. So and then you just basically to keep adding on time, you just defeat enemies, you know, um, and uh, all that just and all that jazz, and uh, just beat levels. Yeah, defeat enemies, beat levels, and and if you collect like a certain amount of coins, you could actually roll like a, a question mark, like a hidden block or whatever, and it could either be a uh, a mushroom, a fire flower, a pow block, or a star. You kind of like a wild card perk that can kind of help you a little bit, which is kind of cool, though. I actually do like that a lot. Um, I think I have, so far, I believe, let's say... I'd say, like, right around, like, 11 to 12 wins on there. I've been actually been beasting it up, like, you know, at least finishing, like, very close between, you know, top 7, top 6, somewhere around there. And it's it's super fun, and, it, and it's actually free in the uh, Nintendo Switch uh, subscriptions for uh, members online if you have a Nintendo uh, Switch uh, subscription account, and I would definitely recommend getting it. It's, it is so addictingly fun. I love it so much, and if you guys, I would recommend playing it. As soon as you guys play it, you will get hooked on it, 100%. Like, I started, I was like, maybe, maybe one of these days, like, I was like, uh, maybe I'm kind of skeptical, and then after I played a couple games, I'm like, this is super fun, <laughs> why am I not playing this before? But yeah, the, it, the game is definitely, like, a recommend on my list, too. It's definitely a uh, very fun Battle Royale game against 35 other people playing Mario as well. But, um, I will try to, you know, like I said, everybody wants me to get Among Us, I will get it, I know it's... Maybe, you know, maybe a couple days before uh, I'll get, like, a freedom check. And once that hits, like, you know, the limit I'll, or the minimum limit, I'll definitely, you know, push that towards PayPal. You know, buy it on Steam. And then the rest is history. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of, like, my plan of what's going on here. So, uh, uh, anything else I've been doing, like, the past three weeks? Um, not, not that I have, you know, known of a part, you know, just doing the usual stuff. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty excited about today's podcast. That's all I can tell you right now. Um, so, yeah, why don't we, why don't we get to uh, the news? Why don't we get to all the news and what's going on in the uh, in the gaming world? Because we have a lot to talk about and a lot to uh, basically catch up on here for the. Um, I was gonna say the past three weeks. We have we have a lot to do. <laughs> we have basically Damn, sports. The angels suck. <laughs> we will actually we will actually be uh talking about that uh well once matt joins we'll definitely be talking about some uh uh sports playoffs here right at the end of the uh right near the end of the uh, show because i know matt's uh, segment especially hockey because matt's got some hockey stuff to talk about but uh i i'm just kind of trying to like open up chatbot here because i kind of forgot uh, to open up chatbot but uh but yeah just thought i'd get that out there but uh but uh, anyways, um, yeah, let's get right to the show here. Let's, uh, I know it was a long intro, but um, yeah, let's get right into the news and uh, what's been going on with the video game world. So as you guys have all have realized by now, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombies got revealed and holy shit, was it hyped up. Like it literally just brought the hype. It was literally 
insane the trailer and all that and oh my god i actually saw like the reaction i saw the zombies uh trailer you know via you know raffle waffles i kind of like lurked in his stream for a little bit just his reaction i swear to god might have been the most priceless reaction like his face told the entire story like on how hyped he was morning yeah that's basically <laughs> what he was <laughs> he was bouncing up and down in his chair and like oh my god oh my Dude, he literally he literally is a child at heart though. And, and I I don't blame him though cuz I kind of am too. But uh oh my god, it was just <laughs> like I'm definitely going to be getting the game for for zombies 100%. Definitely, for sure. And I know Penguin you were kind of skeptical on the uh the zombies, you know, if you there's no zombies, I'm not getting it. Well, they show the zombies, this game proved you wrong. 100%, man. <laughs> I can say like they did, they did the quick teaser, which they were all doing the little Easter egg thing. Shit, I gotta get this game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially, uh... But my, my favorite part of the reveal is the remake of the Deadshot Daiquiri perk machine. Ooh, that looked bad the, Yeah, it did. <laughs> oh my god, and it was a lot bigger, too. Like, bigger in size, Bunny also. Skull with a heavy metal black guitar on it. Damn, that was a good looking machine. Yeah, that was... I think they, they redid a lot of the perks, though. I... I am actually quite shocked, and the best part about that is there's no perk limits too, so you can yep. like basically drink every single perk. It's basically like perkaholic built in the game. <laughs> it's basically as as what it was. Points, you can get whatever perk you want. Yeah, and oh my god, and then the custom uh, weapon builds. You that way you don't start with a pistol anymore. Oh man, that was just oh my god. I'm like, so happy with that. That's some of that's the, awesome. Uh, like, the bigger YouTubers, even Conan Pizza, he's like, you know, I don't like that. I'd rather start with a pistol. I'm like, they said that you could start with a pistol if you wanted, an LMG, an SMG. Yeah. Start whatever you want. So I don't see why you're saying you don't like it when you, if you want to start with a pistol. Oh, this, this is, that's, this is amazing. I think this is actually awesome. Like, they actually added this feature. Best like, you can start. The whole thing does best. DLC is free. Yes, that is correct. DLC is free, no matter if you have, you know, this. Well, I don't know if it's is it. Is it we call it the battle pass. I guess they are kind of doing a battle they pass. Said DLCs but, are free. Period. Yeah, DLCs are free. Period. I guess if it's, yeah, just basically zombie maps. Did they say for multiplayer maps too, or was it? Um, the uh, I think the battle is pass just, is going to be on the multiplayer side. For, okay, I figured. Okay. Um, skins and stuff, but it won't really be, like, uh, where you have to use it to get maps. The, okay. Uh, DLC maps will be free, but like skins and uh, um, camouflages and stuff for your weapons. That'll, that's if I understood them right, that's what the battle pass will be. Yeah. How about Frank Woods and zombies, dude? I saw that. I was like, holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, that is just. I a... saw that, and I was like, this is gonna be interesting to have him and his crew. And then, but the biggest thing to me that really sold me on it's still in the same timeline. Mm -hmm. It's like it the had, sequel. It showed the girl going to the phone booth, and then he says, "Sam, what did you do?" I was like, "Did he just say Sam?" Is yeah, I was like, "That's yeah, Samantha. That is Samantha, like older, older Samantha." Yeah. That now is. Here's the question: Where's Eddie? That's a good question. They might actually have like something for him though, because like somewhere you, down the you line. Remember, um, at the end of Tagged or Toten and the Easter egg, it shows her and Eddie as kids walking into the light. Mm -hmm. So it's like. We know where she is. Where's Eddie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is a very, very good point. And like I was mentioning earlier, um, I feel like maybe they'll reveal something down the line once the you know the DLCs you know drop. I think they'll have like something for him. Like, but he'll... it makes sense to me that that's why zombies are kind of still a thing, and they had something that was able to um, create them. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they if they captured Eddie and. Uh, actually like tortured him to get the secrets of the zombies oh out. that's a good point yeah that's another good theory actually and then samantha's trying to save eddie that's actually a really good theory i never really thought of that like maybe they'll find him like somewhere somewhere getting tortured but uh yeah that's that's gonna i feel like it's it's just i feel like the whole story is gonna be good though i'm like um I'm still a Blundell fan. I'm not gonna lie, even though even though Craig Houston, I, I'm not gonna lie though, he actually did an amazing job with the development of the story. But I'm always gonna be a Blundell guy, 100. Yeah. <laughs> percent I'm always Blundell a Blundell. Set a, he set a bar for the zombies when it came to Treyarch level, mm -hmm. and 
Lee Ross did a very amazing job with IW, which we still got to get you on. <laughs> and, I mean, but the thing with IW is, it's, and I've told so many people about this, it makes me laugh, is at first, the bigger YouTubers, except for Pizza, were hating on it so bad. And now, well, that's where they were a bunch of sheep, though, like, guiding, like, you know, oh, let's if he hates on this, let's hate on that, too. Yep, and it's like, they were the Treyarch hardcore... And I heard him say it so many times, like, well, this map was fun, but it's no Treyarch. I'm like, I don't care. It was meant to just be a fun experience, not a, I'm going to try and beat the living crap out of you by making an extremely hard map thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's Zombies in Spaceland was super fun. I think that was, like, the only map I ever, you know, played with Brother Goofy mm -hmm. a long time ago. I played a little bit of Rave in the Redwoods, but not, like, enough to actually explore. But uh, yeah, the best map they had overall was Shaolin Shuffle because you got. That's what I've been hearing. Like Shaolin Shuffle has been, you know, like the best map. Yeah, it, it's kind of funny that people were so disappointed in how short Rave was, and mm -hmm. then they were so excited and really enjoyed Shaolin Shuffle. And he even said the reason we didn't spend that much time on making a more complicated Easter egg for Rave is we wanted to make Shaolin Shuffle better than just mm -hmm. like. So they spent time on it, and I was like, I thought Shaolin Shuffle was a day. There's only one step with that one that is super annoying to me on solo, and that's the disco uh, dance ball step where you have to shoot a zombie that's dancing while another one's in the dance floor. Otherwise, oh, you have to yeah. Restart. Oh, that, that actually does look... Solo, drives me nuts. I was going to say, that actually does sound like super hard on paper. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I was shocked when I was trying to do my my first ever recorded speed run I actually beat it in under 50 minutes oh nice yeah congrats on that that's actually not too shabby and I beat uh, Spaceland in under 30 <laughs> the other day well I mean you have everything so it does, like every single thing in the book are like unlockable so it doesn't really shock me that you can actually beat under 30 minutes so but speaking of you know um, zombies maps like I actually noticed somebody said this on Twitter though like they were like there was like a section in the woods that was like kind of like I'm trying to put this in like where I'm kind of terrible at explaining things, but uh, it kind of looks like Raven the Wet Redwoods, kind of like. And somebody said it was uh, inspired from Lee Ross, in a way. I think it's a mix. It it's like a mix scene, of it. I'm kind of terrible. It looked like it was like a black white scene, but to me, it was more reminiscent of the movie Avatar at night yeah. by Luminescence. Yeah, it was like more bluish than a uh, black and a uh, black and white. Yeah. But so yeah, it seemed more like they kind of might have got the idea from Rave, but I think they drew more from the movie Avatar for that one. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it was definitely Re Lee Ross inspired for sure. Uh, so Matt was saying it's uh, <laughs> Matt was saying it's inside <laughs> the dark ether itself. I mean, that's a possibility. Like, uh, I love how they said like right at the end of the trailer, like the dead just don't want to stay dead. <laughs> oh my God. But um, but yeah. Speaking of Call of Duty, the uh, Black Ops uh, Cold War multiplayer beta is this Friday. So if you guys want to, uh, if you actually have pr the uh, game pre-ordered, uh, it's a uh, it's first weekend. It's for the people that pre-ordered, and the second weekend is free for uh, all consoles, PS4 and Xbox One. I'll definitely try it. You know, it's I will definitely give it a go for sure because I love Treyarch multiplayer games, Iqbal, except for. Uh, I kind of hate to say it, like I'm waiting to pre-order because I want to wait and see if they have because they brought back Juggernaut. I'm kind of curious if Treyarch will do. Please, fingers crossed, toes crossed, bring back the Juggernaut mini fridge. Ooh, that's that's a good that's a good question. That's a good theory to bring up. I think maybe they might do it. Like it's, I de can definitely consider it a possibility. But um, I mean, maybe one of these days, maybe if they put it like maybe like as an Easter egg in a map or something. But um, what is some like way back when? Um, I don't know if they will. I know IW did, which helped out a lot. You yeah, inspired points. from uh, Black Ops Two to share points. Yeah. Um, I do know the one thing that they're bringing in, which I do think is a good idea. If you get too high of a round, like say you're trying to do an Easter egg and you're just getting overwhelmed with zombies, they make it to where you can call in a chopper to evacuate and save what you've got. Ooh. However, it bumps it up 11 rounds. So if you're on round 21, you're going to be on round 30, 32. Mm -hmm. Yeah. While just... trying to survive waiting for the chopper. So it bumps it up 11 rounds whenever you do that. 
Ah, that's okay. So that's basically just a basic uh, survival zombies game. That's all you got to yep, do. I think it's like you have to survive either five minutes or you have to survive the whole wave that comes at that round. Mm -hmm. And then you can evacuate. And whatever you have experience point wise, whatever, I think it's supposed to save your perks and basically whatever you were able to get is supposed to save for you so you don't lose it by just downing yeah and going back to the multiplayer aspect here because uh i i hope my uh miami is actually in the uh map selection for the beta for uh like team deathmatch kill converts because everybody's saying miami is actually one of the coolest maps in the like multiplayer maps in the game like i've kind of yet to I see it but it. miami was was a decent map um to me Brother Goofy I loved like... Miami, like 80s style Miami Vice sort of thing. Yeah, He's I mean it was a good map, that. but um, I will say though, like to me, there's still a little bit of work that can be done with it to make it a little bit better. Just small mm -hmm. stuff here and there, nothing major. Um, they have to do something with the desert map. I forgot what it was called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Though, the one with like the go uh... way out into the desert as a sniper, and still yeah, be that that looks like, like... Dude, I thought that was out of bounds. So. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say that map actually looks like it'd be like a sniper-heavy game, like just yeah, uh, it just was, by itself. Uh, and there was there was another map that was kind of to me it was like a version of Nuketown for it because it was such a small map. I can't remember which one it was. But... All right, here here's another question though. I would like to bring you. So will they add another like Nuketown-ish sort of multiplayer, like another version of it? Oh, you know they will. Newtown's like a favorite for multiplayer. Oh, yeah. I mean, it'll be like maybe like for those who like pre-order the... It's like a BO3 thing. Those who pre-order the game get Newtown such and such and uh, like a Cold War, like 198, not like a, you know, Vietnam version of Newtown, but maybe like a, uh, let's say more of a, um, more of an 80s, like, Newtown-ish yeah. kind of. Not, yeah, and I'm not talking about like, you know, Newtown zombies, obviously. Uh, what was the name of the Newtown map from uh, BO4? It was, uh... Oh my god, I can't think of it now. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'm I'm, I'm I'm drawing blanks here. <laughs> Alpha Omega. Alpha Omega. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, like it, they'll it'll kind of have that vibe, but it's more gonna be like more 80s and more and less undead. I will say, like as maps went, I was actually disappointed in Alpha Omega. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th to be honest, like the electric ray gun, I love using. Like it just all you didn't really run out of ammo it just you, i mean you kind of did but it just had like had a recharge rate on how much ammo you had to get back but uh i think the only that was the only downside to it but uh other than that though i think the electric gray gun was probably like one of my favorites on there but other than that it was just meh <laughs> it was just wasn't really uh that map was not really like a big favorite of mine especially like when you try to use uh rush mode yeah that that map's awful i think tagged or toten honestly was a little bit better on the map aspect but during if the the reimagined sort of thing, but hopefully with the uh, different story zombies maps, you know they're going to be creating new maps, fresh maps, you know, not remade ones. If they remake, if they re, if they add like reimagined ones, then I'm just going to be like, Ugh! not going to be uh, not going to be too thrilled with that. But hopefully, yeah, hopefully the sequel to zombies like right after the events, right after you know tagged or toad, and that's going to be you know the thing to do. That's gonna be, you know, the hopefully like the uh, the gateway to open up to like new possibilities and maps for sure. So, so if you uh, want to pre-order the game now to get a free act, well, not yeah, to free access when you pre-order the game on PS4, it's basically like I said, sixty dollars for the standard version, and if you pre-order now, you will get access for the first weekend of the beta. So everybody's gonna be on that. I know that for a fact. So uh, we're gonna be uh, everybody's gonna be on that grind for sure. And if uh, I think if I saw that if you reach level ten of a multiplayer of the multiplayer beta, I think you actually get like a certain gun during launch. I forgot what it was called though. I saw it on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, uh, I think you get the woods pack. Yeah, like the uh, no, it was the uh, it was like a suppress amylinity. I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure. Uh, Something like that. Matt said to be on in a sec, he's getting his pizza. All right, man, sounds like a good plan. Um, but yeah, I think I, I saw it on Twitter, but I remember seeing it like a bunch of times, but um, I don't remember what it was, but somebody has to fill me in like comments, comment section below, since I know this will be up on uh, Thursday. So if you guys uh, like to, if you're seeing this on YouTube, how are you doing? Hope you guys are having a good day. Um, 
So, um, as of this moment, uh, we're going to be moving on here. So, um, we're going to go get to some Nintendo news that are su super exciting Nintendo news. I don't know. If, uh, I mean, this was kind of underwhelming to me, but uh, as soon as this announcement, like, dropped, holy crap. Like, the, inner, the Twitter and the whole social media just broke for, like, five minutes, and you'll see, uh, you'll see why here. <laughs> you'll see why with this news. So, uh... Basically, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate had a character uh, release uh, release trailer for the uh, seventh DLC fighter in the Season 2 pack, and Nintendo fans have been waiting for a new character to be added to the massive Super Smash Bros. Ultimate roster, and with a character reveal event you know, set for you know, last week, rumors and speculations were all over who the character could have been you know, ran wild in recent days. There were reports that could have said seen a character from Blizzard's Overwatch, and we do have Overwatch news here, light, minor news coming out up here in a little bit. And some thought that Crash Bandicoot would finally lay into Smash Brothers, while Xbox fans hoped it was uh, Master Chief. But instead, get ready for this. Steve from Minecraft, you heard me correctly. Steve from Minecraft is going to be the new Smash Brothers character and can be swapped out for Alex, Enderman, or a zombie, and he is going to be available as part of the Smash Brothers Fighter Pass Volume 2 DLC, and he will be available next week. So, yes, Steve from Minecraft in Smash Brothers, and they have a Minecraft map, you know, arena set up, everything. Sakurai really, really, really took his time to, uh, just like, just to, uh, edit, like, parts of the game and just put, um, I would say, let's just say all the, uh, the crafting materials and how you can, like, you don't, you don't obviously have the mine in Minecraft. Well, they actually took their time to, like, have that edited where Steve can mine, like, on all areas of the arena. Like, every single arena in the game he can mine, which is insane. I can imagine how much time that took to uh, actually do that, though. But, uh, Peng, your thoughts. Your thoughts on that. Uh, I've never been a Minecraft player. I've actually, I can honestly say I've never even played it. So I played it, you know, every every you know few times way back a long time ago. But I think that was I think the last time I played Minecraft was like I said mentioned this many times. I did a um, 10k uh, subscriber sub yeah, subscriber project for a friend of mine, and all of a sudden, uh, yeah, it was uh, more of a uh, it was more of a like a, a clone hero sort of a thing. But um, I haven't played it since after that. Once she hit 10k, but. Um, Anyway, um, yeah, the, I mean, to have, like, the whole internet broke for, like, five minutes as soon as Steve got announced, which, this is, like, and Minecraft is, like, you know, the the highest selling game in, like, history of, of out of every, like, every single franchise that's been, like, ever existed. That's nuts. That's honestly nuts. Yeah. Which, um, yeah, I mean, this shocked everybody. Well, not shocked everybody, but this... Was it hyped up everybody? Well, that would be the correct word to use, with uh, with your boy Steve and Minecraft being in Smash Brothers, which is, woo! Everybody was. Yeah, Matt was excited because he loves that game. <laughs> and Matt is hurt here. He just joined. I know. So. <laughs> but um, yeah. So it kind of makes sense though to me in a way though, because um. They did Banjo and Kazooie, which was also now it used to be a Nintendo product. Now they're a Microsoft product, and Minecraft's also a Microsoft product. So they kind of like Nintendo and their collaboration with Microsoft has kind of been you know on point as of recently. So it was underwhelming for me, but I'm happy for the people that actually want him in the game. So basically, like a Smash Brothers Ultimate reveal is like basically a Christmas morning sort of thing. It's like Christmas for Nintendo fans. Like, you're either going to get your hopes up, you're going to be excited, or you're going to get shot down with, like, really bad, you know, really bad regrets on having your hopes uh, extended to a high amount. But that's just that's just basically Smash Brothers Ultimate you know, fan base in a nutshell. But, yeah, but like I said, me personally, I'm excited for the people that wanted him in, and I think that's been, like, a meme for, like, the longest time ever. Like, the absolute longest time, like, people... Sorry about that, little technical difficulties there, but, um... But anyways, yeah, the my, the, the movesets for, uh, Steve from, my, from Minecraft being in Smash Bros. It looked interesting, like, 
I actually own the game, but I could maybe buy the just him by itself just to actually try him out. But I'm I'm super excited for it. Like I'm super ex well not excited excited like other people are like other Minecraft fans are you know just to uh, mess around with it. But I I'm I'm pretty excited nevertheless just to, for those people that want him in the game. So Matt, what do you think, man? Whoa. How you doing? Uh, what do you think? Oh. Let me see. What am I doing? No, I said, how are you doing, first of all? Oh, just, uh, good. Just, uh, joining the podcast while monitoring little Andrew in the bathtub. Oh, you, you got, uh, got parenting duties. Uh, that never, uh, ceases to amaze me. <laughs> that's, all, that's, yeah, that's dad duties, yeah. That's what happens. Um, uh, that's a unique change, though, from the, the narrative to have, um, um, a Minecraft character in there, because typically with when I think Smash Brothers, I think Nintendo characters. Well, Nintendo's yeah. done a lot of collaborations, though. Like, you know, like yeah. I said, I was mentioning Banjo, um, Banjo Kazooie. So, it used to be Nintendo, now they're Microsoft, and Nintendo's got a pretty good relationship with uh, Microsoft. I think secretly I was hoping for Crash Bandicoot. That would have been a unique twist. Uh, yeah, there was a there was a couple people that didn't really want Crash Bandicoot in there for a couple of reasons. But uh, if I had to stick a PlayStation character in there, I think for me it'd be Spyro. Like Spyro the Dragon would probably get my like uh, my uh, nod, at least at least for me. If Nintendo had to do a crossover with PlayStation, I think Spyro would have been like the better character, even over uh, Crash Bandicoot. But that's just me. But um, anyways, um, yeah. So I was that uh, before you were uh, before you uh, jumped in the chat here. I was telling Penguin this, and I said I was going to talk about this on the show. Um, so, I was talking about, uh, Super Mario Bros. 35 for Nintendo Switch. If, if you got, like I said, if you guys haven't played that, you know, it's definitely, get it, it's super fun. Uh, get ready for this bombshell statement. I think, personally, Super Mario <laughs> Bros. 35 is better than Fall Guys. I've said it. I've said my piece. I've yes, honestly said my- Fall Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I've That's said because that. you don't have as many crowds, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually, like, from an actual perspective, like, it was, like, super addicting. Super, uh -huh. super addicting. Like, you get on this game, you won't even think that Fall Guys even exists. Even even if uh, Season 2 drops. Get mm -hmm. on the game, Matt. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I was thinking maybe you might disagree with me on that, but hey, I know you haven't played the game yet, but... Definitely, I know you have a Nintendo Switch Online, you know, subscription mm -hmm. account. So, I do. definitely, definitely go play that. You will get, you will get hooked. <laughs> I've been telling you in the DMs, man. Definitely go play Super Mario Brothers 35. So addicting. You could actually get a win super easily if you actually have the right strategy. Like, I would definitely, uh, I would definitely can see you get a win. Even Dan the Man plays if he, you know, I'm pretty sure he has one too. He can definitely, uh, you get a win. In that, at least one or two, and I don't know, maybe. Nintendo purist, though. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but also uh, right before uh, I don't know, kind of like the stream kind of crashed on me, but uh, so your thoughts? I want to hear your thoughts personally on the Cold War zombies. Like, how would you rate it? I know Penguin and I were discussing it, but how would you rate it? I would say, forgive me, I have a crust in my mouth. Um. Eating pizza. Say, He's yeah. eating pizza. Twenty huh. percent off with the hashtag code name Matman. Matman um, ninety eight for uh, ninety percent off your uh, Domino's orders. <laughs> uh -huh. 98 percent off if I had my way. Um, oh, I see what you did there. That two percent goes a long way. Um, I think it was a unique perspective. I think they kind of had a little bit of a a classic take on it. I believe it was Black Ops one or two, where they had the teasers were. Um, they had some really nice teasers and little mini Easter eggs in the multiplayer modes that led up to the reveal. Mm -hmm. And they did it even on the website, too. I think it did the same thing for multiplayer and the game itself. And then for zombies, they did the exact same thing. They had these little mini teasers here and there, here and there. And, of course, the usual suspects were grinding it out to try to translate. And it was like a four-day Easter egg is what it was. Mm -hmm. so per day, and it involved the community, so the community had to kind of put their their extra effort in like they always do. Um, and they came in clutch, and of course on the last day where the, the teaser came out, 
the teaser one, like, I, I immediately saw that I was going, oh no, this is going to be another World War II remake. I, I was very, very underwhelmed by the teaser because it had that horror at flick. The, at the start. Uh, and then when yeah. they said Sam, that's when you're like, wow, what, Samantha? <laughs> well, no, when they did the actual trailer itself, when they, uh, like, the first, like, five seconds, it showed a little bit of gameplay. I kind of had the same reaction as Milo. I'm like, what, what, what? What? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, that's just, then John comes on, and I'm like, oh, boy. And he just says the word, zombies. My, mm -hmm. my, my hair, a hair on my arm stood up, and I heard, zombies. And I'm like, oh, it's here, mm -hmm. it's here. Mm -hmm. But the gameplay itself and just seeing, um, what they're doing is very, very exciting for me to see oh, that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Definitely. 100%. I, 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 if I was an uneducated player, I would have assumed that Lee Ross and Jason Blundell put that together. <laughs> it's based <laughs> on the, the colorfulness of some, the new the elemental pop being like a rave shout-out, and of course being in the, the ether, as I call it. Mm -hmm. Being like rave-ish. So I kept thinking, this has got to be like Lee and Jason coming together. This can't be Craig Houston. There's no way. <laughs> um, that's like my first initial thought on it. Um, but uh, it yeah, but he great. he shocked me though. He actually did. Houston actually did like an amazing job. He honestly did. Like the Craig graphics wise, that, yeah. That hair dude too. Called, my goodness. Uh, I think he called Jason Blundell. I was like, hey, how do I do this? He, yeah. he probably gets he some called tips. Both. <laughs> he called the goats. He called Jason, and he called Lee, like, guys, I need some help here. I need it. I, this, the community is left. I need your help to get it back. Um, mm -hmm. It, it kind of reminds me of, like, uh, the mayor <laughs> off of uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Jack, I can't make decisions. I'm just an elected official. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but the... the the, the the all the weapons that they have there they have the, obviously the ray guns back and a lot of us are hoping that it's not as crappy as it was before that's actually where it was meant to be when it first came out which is a mm -hmm. an amazing amazing weapon to have mm -hmm. but then having the uh, I guess I guess you can call that a BFG a BMFG or whatever it looks like a remodel of the uh, thunder gun yeah, yeah just a... Like a remodel thunder gun like mark mark two or something like that people kept saying it looks like something from Doom. But, um, yeah, it looked like the uh, BFG or Big F gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that looks great. But the fact that there's a, I guess a um, adjusted version of zombie blood looks like, like you become like this blue aura, and it looks like the zombies yeah. are running away from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just yeah, as a whole, it looks very, very good, and it did get me on that train where I'm like, absolutely, I will get this. Mm -hmm. And um, a couple things worry me though. Uh, this might be a shared uh, worry. I'm really worried about the score streak thing, especially. I'm not. I don't know how I feel about having a helicopter coming in, because that kind of takes away from the survival aspect of things, where you you have these hordes and hordes coming after you, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, we just use a chopper gun to just knock out the horde. And I'm like, uh, what oh about boy. for like future boss fights, uh, like Easter eggs? I think the score streaks will actually be. Uh, I, I have a strong feeling that those might be deactivated in the boss fight. Just to make Ooh. it fair and balanced. Mm -hmm. I have a theory, because I've been thinking about this a while for the uh, score streaks, and let me do what y'all think. My theory is, what if the score streaks are only activatable in something like a rush mode? You mean like the, uh, uh, what do they call the X X XL or whatever they call it thing, to um, to jump out with a zombies increase to a level, like 11 levels or something like that? Mm -hmm. Where you want to escape the map with your points and just be like, all right, forget the Easter egg. Let's just let's bounce out instead of bit and killed. That I like yes. though. That you actually yeah. get challenged. You get challenged into having to survive. Yeah, you can't just like, oh, time. okay, you get to leave with everything. No, it's like you have to survive. Yeah, mm -hmm. that would be like worth the reward though. Mm hmm. I think yeah, so. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, I could. You were penguin. Yeah. I would reduce. I think didn't like. Um, what did you say? Like IW had like a similar thing. The IW's thing wasn't a you can leave and keep everything. Their thing was the uh, cash system where you could share the points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I figured as much. Yeah, that would make sense, though, in a way. So that And it helped out a lot, especially when you were trying to get ready for a boss fight. Like, if you had 15,000 points and your buddy only had five and needed more to pack a punch, you could share yeah, so I, I really enjoyed that aspect of <laughs> kind of like a Black Ops Two sure sort points. of banking kind of system. Yeah, yeah. Just, just a little bit better. Well, Warzone does that too, where they they have it to where um, yeah, if you, you need drop. to like 
Yeah, you just drop it, but you can also, like, some your other teammates can buy it for you, and you can actually share, you can buy it for them, and then share, I guess, it with them, drop that particular thing. Yep. So that's pretty cool. That's a good uh, aspect. I did like that aspect mm -hmm. on BO4, where if you got something out of the mystery box, like, oh, I don't want that, all you have to do is, uh, melee, melee it, and your partner mm -hmm. can pick it up. Mm -hmm. I did like that. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty pretty neat little uh, feature <laughs> that I've seen. You know, here's something that they didn't address, and I really hope it's something that they listened to the community and went, you know what, you're right, we tried this, it sucked, let's, let's just change it back to the way it was. For the love of God, Treyarch, please, I hope you listened to the community and stopped the time limit for the last zombie that you were training, and that you can officially train again. You can train mm -hmm. a zombie without any time limit. They're going, oh, it is bled out, even though they're not a crawler. So that was kind of stupid that they added that. Mm -hmm. As I look, as I look at my absolutely adorable little boy Andrew coming out of the bathtub. Mm -hmm. Hi, Andrew. Um, but uh, that was the most annoying thing. I think Penguin and I, and I are not the only ones that shared that that frustration, mm -hmm. where you're yeah. trying, you're making great progress in the egg, and then all of a sudden, you're low rounds, and this one zombie just dies out after five minutes. You're going, dang it. So, yeah, hopefully they do change from, that. They need to change that. You go from that. a low round to, like, a friggin' round 15 in a matter of two seconds. It's like, what the <laughs> freak, man? Or you can pull, I like, mean, a Shadow Man strategy on uh, Shadows of Evil. You actually shoot yeah. the uh, thing, and he takes you to, like, <laughs> <did>. round 20. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Hi. I've done it before, though. It's pretty challenging. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I, tr I tried that strat, too, on Shadows. The, the uh, I guess, the teleport to next rounds. Skipping rounds with that. That's yeah. I was in the, the the spawn location. And I'm like, I immediately regretted it as I was being chased by like, had like five hundreds of zombies in the, the spawn location. I'm like, nope, this was a bad idea. <laughs> so I right. immediately just started like running towards the uh, the the uh, the gate and opening things up. And by the time that happened, at least about fifty were, were around me. So I was like, yep, this was a bad idea. Hello, hey, Ken. Oh, I bet um, I, mean, I bet Andrew's excited for that too. He gave me a big smile when I was talking about the the egg. He's mm -hmm. like, really? They brought back a great egg? What do you think? Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, so moving on here. Uh, so uh, we have more Nintendo news here. So Nintendo Treehouse returns on October 2nd, which if you guys are seeing this live, it's tomorrow. But it's going to be up by Thursday, like the full edited version. So it probably would have been passed by now, and I'd love to know your thoughts on it. So uh, anyways, oh. Nintendo Treehouse Live's return with... Uh, Basically at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 a.m. 1 uh, p.m. Eastern time, with a live stream presentation featuring two segments. So, the first one's going to be a Pikmin 3 Deluxe Deep Dive, and the new stage and gameplay details for Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. So that's all going to be tomorrow at 10 a.m. So Nintendo Treehouse is back. So uh, yeah, just uh, mark that on your calendar. So. Um, and um, Matt, I wanted to ask you this before I, I did, did mean to switch topics here, like right off the rip. But um, are are you going to be playing the multiplayer beta this weekend? Um, I will definitely give it a major league effort. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try to do it more, maybe more so in like the, the late hours of the day. Just okay. Because you know my commitment with the boys and everything, so. Um, okay, so what about are you guys gonna be? Are you guys gonna watch the treehouse? Uh, the treehouse for uh, Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. I'm hyped for it. I have, I have that pre-ordered. I have that. I'm, I'm ready to go with that. I'm I'm hyped. I'm gonna be streaming that also too, sometime down the road when that's released. I'm I'm definitely streaming that. <laughs> oh, even Andrew's excited for Hyrule Warriors. I can. He's a, he's a good kid. <laughs> no, I, sh I showed I showed him a brief glance at my. Headset that has my channel logo on, and he's like, ah, "Oh, like, he, that's oh, cool, Dad. oh, he didn't like it. That, that does not, that does Do not you say. Want, you want Crown Tundra? Can you say Crown Tundra? <laughs> All right. And speaking of, uh, speaking of, uh, Hyrule Warriors, uh, Age of Calamity, they actually <laughs> announced uh, two new characters that supposedly that could be allies or playable <clears throat> characters for the game. So the first one is Robbie, and the second one is Pura. Which, of Rabbit. course, if you have an, uh... Yeah, which is kind of weird, though, to me. Like, Pura, it looks, like, normal, like, a hundred years ago, but you could fast-forward a hundred years later in the Breath of the Wild, she looks like she's a kid. Like, she's, like, getting younger and younger, which is... kind of weird. I think maybe the same can be said for Robbie too. 
I don't know, maybe Hyrule has like a really weird aging concept or like older people get younger and then I guess there's some like younger people, I don't know. That's that's like a weird touch, I'm not, I think they'll probably explain more of that once once that time comes, like once the game's actual release. So, um, uh, you guys gonna try to play it or no? I know Matt won't play Wait, which it. Which one again? Uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of that. Calamity. It's gonna be the, um, the uh, prequel so, to uh, uh, Breath of the Wild. Maybe, we'll see. I know Matt won't be playing it. <laughs> Penguin's a maybe. I yeah, I, I mean. Breath of the Wild, so yeah. I, I'm super hyped for it. Like I played Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games on the Switch, and mm -hmm. I I love I love Zelda games. So and that's like my second favorite franchise behind a uh, Nintendo franchise that is behind Pokemon. So that is there. And speaking mm -hmm. of uh speaking of Pokemon, we'll get to that here. We'll, well actually we'll we'll get that here too a little bit. But yeah, Hyrule Warriors. I'm pretty excited. I, the whole internet was excited for the uh, the especially the trailer when they dropped for uh. Pura and Robbie for the new characters that you can see in Breath of the Wild too. They do help you out though. Even Andrew's excited. Every time I mention High High Rewards, he he gets excited. So uh -huh. he'll he'll definitely be a Zelda player. You got a future Zelda player that you've created, Matt. <laughs> I don't even know how I did that, but okay. Hey, like I said, you play certain video games. People would love certain video games. But anyways, um, so another more Nintendo actual the. I wouldn't say the last, last video, well, kind of getting there, but uh, on October 13th until uh, t uh, October 20, uh, October 20th, 2020, wow, that was almost a mouthful to say, mm -hmm. uh, Nintendo Switch online members can just experience the full version of Overwatch, so Overwatch is going to be free for Nintendo Switch online members that have a, a subscription account, so um, if you guys want to test out Overwatch, you are more than welcome to, it will be free on Nintendo Switch for a week. Uh, from the 13th to the 20th of October. So, if you guys want to test it out, I know Penguin's played a little bit of it, but he kind of stopped for after a while. But Matt, that would be the time to do it if you want to play it. It's free on the 13th for a, for a Nintendo Switch Online. But I don't know. I don't know if it'll play the same though, like it like it did for a PS4. But um, I would definitely like like definitely try out the game once because if, if you don't like it, hey, you know, at least you tried it, right? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I would definitely, like I said, if you guys want to go play Overwatch on the Switch, that is there. So you can definitely check that out once it drops on October 13th. It's free for a week though, like they did with, uh, it was a uh, Pokemon tournament, the Pokemon fighting game. They, I think they released that for like, you know, I think for a week also, and then they kind of took it down after that. But uh, definitely go uh, check that out as well. And speaking of, um, uh, Nintendo news and you were talking about Crown Tundra early. They actually did a poke well not really a Pokemon direct, but they did a uh, three minute uh, trailer on what is to be expected for the uh, Crown Tundra of uh, Pokemon Sword of Shields uh, expansion pass. And the the first uh, the first uh, thing that they well not the first thing they mentioned the important thing that they mentioned is it is going to drop on October 22nd, so it's sooner than expected. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah Matt's, I can tell by the sound of your voice you're excited for that. So uh, what do you think about that's, this uh, release date? That's two days before my birthday, so that's like, woo! That's, early, that's, early birthday present! There you go. Now you're set and ready to go. <laughs> oh, somebody too. <laughs> like, I was gonna... Yeah! Oh my god, I was going to say, it almost sounded like Kermit the Frog there when he got excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yay! But, um, anyways... I like the, I like the ground tundra. <laughs> so, it was supposed to be originally released in November... Uh, well, actually, Washington, no, wait, no, I'm reading that wrong. It was originally released in uh, November 2019, with the expansion of uh, Isle of Armor being added in June 2020. And they guess they were supposed to announce this in, like, November of... Uh, I guess of this year, but I guess they kind of uh, like expected to fall. But uh, I, I believe they actually kind of pushed it to October 22nd, which will probably be the meat of the DLC. So basically, during the presentation, they outlined you know Crown Tundra and the story. We also revealed that our players will be able to catch all legendary Pokemon from the main from the past mainline games in the new mode called dynamic di di excuse me dynamax adventure raids and the pokemon company also announced that another addition to the crown tundra the galarian star tournament where players can team up and take on all the region's elite trainers so how hyped are you guys 
I know, Matt, on a scale of 1 to 10, how hyped are you? He's probably going to say a number over 10. Watch. <laughs> He's so hyped he passed out. <laughs> He's like, yeah! Uh, we probably had to do something with uh, Andrew here. But um, yep. anyways. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, no. Okay, I was just making sure. I was just oh, making sure you were here. My microphone was mic was mute for some reason. Okay, um, but uh, I would say because I like yes, yes. Wait, what, Bill? <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, it was uh, I would say I wouldn't say ten because that I would just be a, a big part of the sheeple. Um, yeah, just preaching to the choir there. <laughs> well, I mean. Considering a lot of the legendaries are coming back, I, I would say it's a lot higher than it was for for the uh, the previous one. That was like a what a fifteen minute. It seemed like mm -hmm. a fifteen minute, aka three hour tour mm -hmm. of uh, Isle of Armor. Three tours of yeah. Whereas uh, with Crown Tundra, I think it'd be more of a fun adventure because you have <laughs> even Andrew's excited about it. Yeah, yeah, he's, so he's, excited, uh... he's pissed off. <laughs> he's what do you mean it's October twenty second? I want now. Um, he's like, I'm excited as shit. Wait a minute. <laughs> Surprise, mother! He said, "Now go clean it up." <laughs> right? Yeah. He actually smiled when he said that too. That's funny. Um, now like, I, I would hey. say a solid, a solid, a solid nine. I'm, I'm a big fan yeah. of seeing all of the legendaries come back, and all the people that were hating on Nintendo going, "Where are the other, the other legendaries? Where are these ones at?" Well, as mm -hmm. usual, if you're patient, which nobody in society is anymore. You mm. see that they just, just come around. Like the, uh, just like the just like the people on Twitter, are like, oh, let's uh, have a Nintendo Direct every time Nintendo of America oh, announces gosh. a tweet. Yeah, like, yeah. Y you know no. what though? The thing I think it's gonna be longer than a three-hour DLC, only because of the fact that maybe slightly, only because of the fact that. Uh, sorry about Andrew in the background. He's That's okay. Yeah. He's still pissed about the DLC. Um, <laughs> But I, I really do see the fact that they, uh, it's such an, if you've seen some of the game files, which unfortunately people all over Twitter have been throwing them out there, the Isle, the, not the Isle of Armor, but the Iron Island, I can't say it right now. Crown Tundra? The, island, the, the Crown Tundra Island itself is humongous. It's almost the same mm -hmm. size as the main, the main storyline, which is crazy. And so there's a lot of great aspects of this DLC that you can do more so than the, the um, Isle of Armor. Uh, which is obviously, mm -hmm. I mean, as they saw in the reveal, you can go after Gigantamax Pokemon with your friends, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually, like, travel in these caves with them and co-op in that particular... Yeah, game. Speak, and that, that those are, that's that, called uh, but... Dynamax uh, Adventures, which yeah. you can't... See, the thing is, though, you can't use your own Pokemon, so you got to use, like, a rental Pokemon. So it kind of reminds me of the, uh, you know, the Battle Factory from Pokemon Emerald yeah. and uh, Platinum and Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver. It's kind of like that, but it's like Dynamax Raids. Which is, I, I like wonder, that though. feature. That's cool. I like that challenge. I w and I feel like I the company, the Pokemon company, is providing that challenge. Now, I hope this is true, but you know how some people have been game hacking and getting like Master Ball after Master Ball after Master Ball after Master mm -hmm. Ball? I really hope that for that aspect, for the Dyna Dynamax uh, battles that they're doing, or what they're calling it, I hope that they, they lock that. So basically, you you have a set amount of Pokeballs and you can choose. Mm -hmm. Which one's that, or there's a lock where saying you cannot. If you have a Master Ball, you cannot bring it in. You have to earn this the catch of this, these, these legendary Pokemon. That mm -hmm. would make it really fun. Yeah. Um, if they do, then if they do not do that, then I'm like, well, screw it. I'm just gonna throw, if I have a Master Ball, I'm throwing it. I'm not gonna take a chance. <laughs> uh, especially if it's a shiny legendary. I wonder what the percentages of shiny legendaries. That would. Be I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure out. people will uh, try to like figure that out, and especially like for the map oh. itself. I was gonna say oh. for the ma for the map though I I saw like a video like a while back saying like the actual data mine for it say like uh -huh. the map that could be it could be like south of your uh, I guess your uh, hometown I guess like kind of like south it could because Crown Tundra and it's but uh, it's in it's in snow right so it's either like yeah. kind of like North Pole or South Pole like if yeah. you think Tundra where would you I, think I know it's, south, it's it, south I would say like more of a south sort of thing yeah but, yeah uh, the big not that I've I didn't I don't even know the first. And somebody, and then somebody, uh, and somebody, somebody was, and some, yeah, it was like a leak sort of thing that I saw, and I saw yeah. that if somebody said if you uh, actually managed to travel like during the uh, data mined uh, map, your game will crash. So yeah, yeah. So it's 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 not worth trying. Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't have I don't have a data mine switch or anything, so I wouldn't recommend doing it anyways. But I, I, like I, I, usually I, I usually see them in videos. I usually see them in videos. 
I'm making Easter eggs. This is how you know that I'm doing it legit because I have no freaking idea how to data mine or how we're even to start. I don't even really don't even care, honestly. And so, I mean, that's for that's so you can kind of know that yeah, Matt's doing this legit because mm -hmm. I have no freaking freaking clue how to do it. I don't know how they do it. I know they have a PC and they found they find their ways to do this to game files. Um, yeah, 24/7, 365. That's what they do. Hashtag I mean, that. Um, <clears throat> but uh. But yeah, the, it, the, just based on the game files that some people have leaked, it looks humongous. And I think oh, that's, yeah. really gonna, that's really going to help with all these side missions. And I, I think one of the things that they showed in the trailer was like a, the random Galarian Articuno was just flapping his wings, just flying above. And he wasn't that humongous. He was just a, almost a normal-sized bird flying above you. Mm -hmm. And at first I looked Which... at him thinking, wait a minute, is that his buddy? But it wasn't. It was just in the wild. Well, here's the thing, though, that I was mentioning. I was looking at the Galarian Articuno just, like, flying around. What if they are they're roaming legendaries that you got to find, yeah. like, a certain amount of time? Ooh, you got to remember that, too. They could be roamers around the island. And you gotta, well, there like... was a little thing, too. If, if you look at one of those parts in the trailer, and I was looking at a breakdown of it, there is a side quest where you can see tracks in the snow. And I wonder if, if that's for Galarex, or Calyrex, I think his name is, or if that's for the birds. That's mm -hmm. I wonder. Since they were yellow feet, maybe it's Moltres, Galarian Moltres. They're trying to find in that one, like he's because he's obviously a fire type at some mm -hmm. point. But um, so I wonder. But that's definitely gotta be. Some There's gonna be a lot of yeah, a lot of legendaries you can catch Ugh. too. So that's it's I gonna be nice. so. I'm so happy that we don't have to do any more Diglett quests. You have no idea how many times I had to record those 151 locations for Diglets. Ugh, oh, oh, I. Don't... I don't it think I've money. actually collected all the Diglett yet. I think I still have like five more left, but I just too, was too lazy to look for them. <laughs> oh, I was too lazy to post. I, I mean, I recorded all the locations. I did snapshots on ones I didn't do on, on my yeah, OBS. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know what? Forget it. It's already out there. People already have it there. You know, if they want it, they can ask for it. I'll put the oh, video yeah. and grind it out. But I mean, if no one's going to really care about the locations of it, I'm gonna be like, I'm not even going to bother. I mean, mm -hmm. I have them ready to go. So if they want it, I'll post it. But mm hmm. I yeah, think these side sure. missions will be a whole lot more fun and a whole lot more, um, you know, rewarding, I think, in the long run. Yeah. But I, I do love that aspect of it. So Crown Tundra, for me, is a 9. It, that looks, it's very yeah. exciting. Like, Isle of Armor all, for all me, stops. Isle of Armor ranking for me was like an 8 because there wasn't, like, really much. I mean, there was kind of a little bit, like, a part of, you know, Kubfu and Urshifu and all that, those quests and all that. Cub Fu is still super cute, though. I'm not gonna. He's he's cool and he's also cute at the same time. I mean, that's like one of my. He's he's one of my he favorite dangerous. Pokemon. He, he, yeah. <laughs> Once you train him up, he's super super dangerous. <laughs> I but, did not uh, regret. I did not regret making him a dark Pokemon, by the way. He I I have all so three cool. sets. So I have the yeah, water set, I, which I went to the water tower, and I got yeah. the uh, dark fighting version <laughs> in a uh, GTS trade on uh, Pokemon Home, yeah, and. Uh, me too. And I got, I think I got a Cub Fu also through, a, I guess, a GTS also. So that's how I kind of got the, to, the family someone's tree. Someone's trying to hack a shiny version. And I saw what the shiny version looked like, and I'm like, eh, it's not even worth it. Even if you knew how to trade for a hacked version, I'm like, I don't even want it. It looks kind of underwhelming, honestly. He just it may not even be. It, it may not. It may not even be the real shiny, honestly. No. Like it could be like completely something different. Like, oh. <laughs> so speaking of speaking of the be the beefy Pokemon, one of the the best part of that announcement was seeing finally get it confirmed. And people were rumoring it all the time. I guess some data miners were finding a way to hack them in the game. Melmetal is going to be a Gigantamax version. Yeah, for uh, Pokemon that, he Go. Looks, woo, he looks good. He looks yeah. nice when he's G Gigantamax. He looks very, very cool. Which kind of um, like, uh, which kind of for me, like kind of raises the question. Uh, do you think I, that uh, the Melmetal that I got from you, do you think I could feed it Max Mushrooms? But I don't think that'll be the case, though. But it'll uh, kind of like maybe have like I would a think possibility. So. I, I, that's just kind of like like that kind of like raises. Well, I wouldn't really say it raises red flags, but I don't know. There's just kind of like yeah. popped in my mind at the same time. But um, now red um, flag as to what reason though? Just because it's kind of underwhelming to be able to go hunt for a uh, a Gigantamax version? No, I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't say that sure. though. But if it's just like a Pokemon Go sort of thing, <laughs> yeah. Like if um. um or it could be like, you know, like you can also feed it max mushrooms with the update, then I don't know, maybe that just, yeah. I don't know, just had like a questions that were like kind of filling my mind though, in a sense. We, you made a good segue, by the way. I was gonna kind of also touch on the fact that they said about Pokemon Go finally gonna be added towards the end of the year, before the end of the year for home. 
Mm -hmm. But that raises the question. Now, you brought this up before with the microtransactions possibly being a thing to, like they did with the Melmetal trades on, for those who aren't familiar with the device of the mobile version, if you wanted to acquire a Melmetal or a Meltan box in Go, you'd have mm -hmm. to make a trade on the Switch on either game, doesn't matter which one it is, um, and then you would be granted a, a box, and it's the Meltan box. Eventually, it went from it went from 15 minutes to 30 minutes, and it's basically 30 minutes of just constant spawns of Meltans. And the fun about it, I've yet to get a shiny uh, Meltan, um, but uh, that's basically the main reason why I still have my device, because I can still trade with uh, that and try to get a shiny Meltan. So in the event that let's just say that you can give him um, the Gigantamax soup in the mm -hmm. Isle of Armor to make him, Gigant to make him Gigantamax, um, or which would be awesome. Then I can I could use that shiny if it's a good one mm -hmm. towards that. Now I don't know how it's going to translate IV wise, but you know, just to say you have a shiny version, always fun. Yeah, definitely. So to answer the uh, question though, the, you said I think it is free the first time you try to transfer a Pokemon from Pokemon Go to Pokemon Home. I guess when they mm -hmm. finally added that, but they do have the micro transactions in there because apparently there's like a cooldown time, like the yeah. transactions are only there to reduce the cooldown time. So you have to like pay like a yeah. certain amount of Poke coins. Like you got to put, you know, it's like a uh, basically, uh, it's basically an in-game purchase. Like yeah, like 200, three or whatever yeah. the case. I haven't played Pokemon Go in a while, but I did see that from <laughs> uh, from Joe Merrick on Cerebi saying that in order yeah. to reduce the cooldown time or like actually bypass the cooldown time, you have to uh, pay that certain amount of Poke coins, which is. Uh, and that's uh, good for them. And that's, and that's fine though. Like at least as, it's not going to be completely. I would say as long as the transaction is not as crazy, like say it's like a thousand coins, because in Pokemon Go, if you played that, it's really hard to, to build up coins in that game, and to get, even to get to like as much as some people have when they like the true grinders. Mm -hmm. But if they do like something simple as okay, the first one's free, the next one you do is going to be if you want to speed up the cooldown time is two hundred coins. Mm -hmm. That's fair, yeah, because that's attainable for everybody. And but if they make if they do make it like something like four hundred or five hundred, I'm not gonna gripe about it because that's fair because then <laughs> right? it makes it it makes it makes it fair because you can't just have these people throwing in their hundred IVs into their Pokemon game and it hopefully just like with let's go Eevee and let's go Pikachu, mm -hmm. hopefully the IVs don't stay the same so it makes it fairer if that makes any sense. Yeah. To where like I have a hundred IV and I trade it over to um, my Switch device and it doesn't guarantee it's gonna be a hundred IV on that end. It could be like a 98 or an 80 for all you know, so that you run mm -hmm. the risk of doing that. But it makes it fun regardless. But yeah, I have quite a few, quite a few Pokemon I need to throw into home to fill my decks up because I can fill my decks up easily with the ones. Yeah, I have. well, especially yeah, now that you have the new Pokemon coming, in, you could also fill up the uh, home Pokedex also, which I could do yep. that, and then I could also transfer the Pokemon that I have from Pokemon Home over to Pokemon Shield, especially all the legendary Pokemon yeah. that are being added in there. I think I have almost like every single one, so the legendary decks is just going to be filled up like five seconds after the DLC is done on my end. <laughs> But yeah, I, one of the, I'm getting yeah. my two Suicunes over. I have a regular Suicune and I have a shiny Suicune I got from a friend. So I'm transferring both of those suckers over. <laughs> I know I know who Kyle's buddy's gonna be when they when the Crown Tundra comes out. Suicune gonna be I'll his just, buddy. Oh, just uh, just to have him. Uh, like I wonder if they're gonna do that. Have the roaming Pokemon co go behind you. That would be like they did with Isla Armor. That would just have a Suicune behind you. That would be yeah. sick. That would be sick. <laughs> I would be. Very, very shocked if they did not decide to keep that aspect because I, so many people were so happy about that aspect when you. And hopefully, it's not like an Isle of Armor where you have to complete the task in Crown Tundra, then you can do it. Hopefully, it's just, hey, if you completed it in the game files, you have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, but, that, uh, would, that would be absolutely amazing. Penguin, are you excited, man? <clears throat> <laughs> he's like he's snoozing, he's snoozing away. He's like, nope, I'm not playing this crap. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Jeez. I, to be honest with you, I haven't looked up on the stuff coming out for Pokemon lately. Yeah, definitely, <sighs> definitely watch the uh, the what? little trailer. Definitely watch the trailer for that. Oh, Matt, Matt got the he re rose his voice and with that tone. <laughs> you haven't been looking at. Okay, <clears throat> calm down, Matt. Calm down. It's okay. 
Okay. No, he, he he can look it up on his own when he gets the chance. So he'll he'll be Trailer fine. He'll be sucks. okay. Gatorade's better. <laughs> right. <laughs> Gatorade. <laughs> oh my god. But um, he's smoking that Haterade. You can't smoke Haterade, Bill. Oh, I do have a shiny Suicune myself as well, but probably IV wise not the greatest. Nah. It's, it's oh, that's where the bottle. Stats. That's where the that's where the bottle caps come in. That's where the bottle mm -hmm. caps come in, man. Damn right, baby. Quite a few mm -hmm. at home that I want to transfer over to the game. No, uh, I wonder will will Keldia will Keldio be in the Kel game? Though? Keldio, I think, is should be in the game. Yeah, because I acquired that via a GTS trade as well. A Keldio, I'm like, wow, okay. Yeah, bloody, what, they weren't hypnotizing people to do uh, bad things. They were um, giving kids seizures because of the lights. <laughs> oh, I remember. Yeah, the Porygon, the Porygon episode. Oh. Okay. Yeah, they had to pull yeah the bloody games. bloody's like, in the uh, chat saying that there was a Pokemon game that got pulled because it was hypnotizing kids and doing the bad things or something uh, crazy. But uh, yeah, Porygon, yeah, it was that the seizures. Yeah, the Lavender Town uh, situation. <laughs> the song was kept. Uh, it actually killed a lot of children when they actually heard that song. There was uh, some kind of speculation with that. Really? Yeah, the wow. the Japanese yeah. version, the Japanese version, like they like when they pulled it from the American, like the Japanese version to the you know red and blue version, they edited mm -hmm. the uh, Lavender Town music so that way it wouldn't sound that way. I read that online. That's crazy. It, um, it wasn't the music itself. Uh, if I remember correctly, it put kids because it was such a. The music sounded like such a downer. It put him into like a very depressed state, and they committed suicide mm. a lot. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. So that's why they kind of like changed it a little bit. And um, jeez, man. Another specul. I was talk talking to Bloody about this in the chat here. I was just uh, he was um talking about um you know there was like you know hypnotizing kids. They obviously hypno the Pokemon. I mean, there's some lore out there mm. saying that hypno is a pedophile. Like it says the Pokedex entry where it kidnaps <laughs> a children and or like a child or something. It takes it like to its like hideout or something. And that's where kind of like the speculation comes in with that. And there's a lot there's a lot of rumor and conspiracy say even with the Pokedex entry saying that hypno is a pedophile. Oh, and yeah, if you read if you well, read its Pokedex well, entry, it talks about kidnapping children. So. I don't know. Well, I just looked that up to recently. Remember, this comes from a country with cartoons of girls getting screwed by an octopus. So, <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> don't be shocked True. by what comes out of the anime True. of Japan. Oh my true. god. Oh my god. Just they. That they is so true. <laughs> there's a lot of. I mean, I love Japanese food, like sushi, especially, and like any sort of, you know, like dragon rolls and all that. But, uh, whoo, yeah. Like, there's some you, of the. Have you looked up the. Vending machines of Japan. Um, I saw somebody tweet about that like a while back, like an they have ad for literally something. Everything in a vending machine, including clothing, and a couple of years ago they came out with women's panties vending machine. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> is, is that actually what? The, wow. interesting? Wow! Serious? Interesting penguin? fact. Hold on, just wait. Interesting okay. fact happened when that got released. <laughs> Attempted rapes and sexualization of women dropped. Oh my gosh. But men buying women's underwear out of a machine went up. <laughs> that. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh. I'm Dude, that Japan's kind of blew over my head a little bit. A very sexually <laughs> frustrated culture. <laughs> Dan, aren't they? Yeah. Well, if, if you had something to wake every once in a while, that'd be fine. <laughs> well, if you, if you had something that small, you'd be angry too. Wait, what, what, what? What? what wait, what? <laughs> what? We're good at martial arts, but we suck in bed. What? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> but, that uh. Going to some quick sports here, really quick, before we head yeah. out. So, uh, Stanley <laughs> Cup finals. We got some Stanley Cup. We got a Stanley Cup champion. Matt, tell us more. I was very sad to see this only because I always pull for the underdog, but yeah. Um, Tampa Bay finally didn't choke like they did last year. They won it. Um,. <laughs> But uh, Steven Stamkos, Stamkos got himself a cup finally. Good for him. Ovechkin mm -hmm. went off the hump. So all three of the big three, as they call them, quote unquote, um, got a cup finally. Crosby got a few. Ovechkin got one two years ago. And now Stamkos got one. So good for him. Go Kings. Um, <laughs> In comes Penguins uh, comment saying, Kings suck. <laughs> yeah, and he goes, go Carolina. Right? I can't say go Carolina. Um, they suck this year. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, Tampa Bay, uh, I think they beat the Dallas in six games, which is crazy because Dallas in the first game looked like they were in absolute control of the series. They completely annihilated the, the Lightning. I mean, it was it was three to, I think it was three nothing they won or two to one, mm-hmm. something like that. It was a good game, but they looked like they were clicking on all cylinders. I was thinking, wow, Dallas could have potentially sweep the way they're playing. And mm-hmm. then once two and three came around, the Lightning woke up. They they figured, okay, we're gonna we're not gonna put the brakes on. We're gonna put the accelerator on full blast, and they crushed them. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hats off to Tampa. They got over the hump again. So, yeah. Um, and, yeah. and, and of course, the sharks are still awful. <laughs> well, not awful, well, awful, but they well, have for COVID to... wise. I think, like I, we were mentioning before, when this whole pandemic started, and about the sports and everything, we did mention that I think hockey of all sports would probably be the one with the least amount of outbreaks. Mm-hmm. Early on, at least before training camp reopened again, they did have a cute, quite a few of them come out. But during the season, they've had very minimal amount of COVID no, cases. Don't yeah, it's on ice. Yeah, they're playing on ice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's exactly like that was baseball, my point. football, yeah. basketball, especially with Cam Newton now, you know, being diagnosed with COVID nineteen, and it's just, uh, <laughs> yeah. That guy. I was, I was just saying, I was talking to Mama Pug about this, and this is absolutely true with what she said. He cannot catch a break. Hundred percent cannot catch a break. Well, look Who's at the fancy wears the slipper. No, but he's <laughs> he's a, he's a good he's got a good personality. It's just like he's just a good guy. Just like that has bad things happen to him, you know, injury wise, mental health is just he doesn't deserve that, obviously. I, I'll say I will say this. Even when at Carolina with all the bad breaks he had, he was I will give him this credit, he's still a I guess you'd call him a warrior to where he kept trudging forward. Mm-hmm. I will yeah. give him that. He he stuck with it, kept trying to improve, <clears throat> and when um I knew that once they got rid of Rivera that he wouldn't be far gone because Rivera was what was keeping him there. And I do think, though, that Belichick will bring out the true quarterback that has been in him the whole time. Fully capable of doing that, like bringing out a lot of the uh, young guns' potential. Like even like the whole thing with Tom Brady, too. Like even when he started with the Patriots, you know, build in big shoes for Drew Bledsoe, and obviously he became one of, you know, one of the – Still probably is one of the greatest QBs of all time. You know, I'm not really a huge fan of him, but I respect what he's done and what for his career. And mm-hmm. he's made he's made the Buccaneers a lot better too. Like they've yep. they've, they've been, the Buck fans were like, We're getting Brady. Yes, we're not gonna suck this year. Yay, we're not gonna suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh Brady and Brady and Gronk too. So. Oh mm-hmm. it, did you see that uh commercial those two made together where it was like I'm going to Tampa, Gronk, and you see him charging for him. Yes, boss. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like that. that was so funny. I was like, as soon as he announced he was going to another team, I was like, I think we said about this on one of our podcasts. It was like, I guarantee mm-hmm. you'll see Gronk immediately say he's going to that same team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're like they're like BFFs forever. They're they're not going. Uh, yep. They're they're not going to be in the uh, inseparable. I almost couldn't say that word right, but uh, now to switch sports, I am curious about. Uh, y'all's take the Major League Baseball postseason uh, games and who's going to make it to the end. What are y'all thoughts? Um, I feel it was kind of weird, at least to me, to have this little new playoff system, especially with COVID-19. Like, it's just, to me, it's not really the same. Like, you get to play, like, maybe, you know, two, three extra games, depending on how long your series goes in the first round. Like, (laughs) it's like first round was a best of two. And then obviously they burn the NL ALDS as of right now, and you have um, and you have the best of you know five games, and then the, after that it's going to be best of seven, and then vice you know so on. Um, and at least to me though, I just it just doesn't feel right. At least to me, you like I just don't. I'm I wouldn't say I don't like it, but yeah. it's just if they keep going it's with this, sort the, of, it's not the same. It's not the same. Like it's here. I, I would. To well, hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Like, I mean, right. I'll probably accept it like at a later point in time. But I mean, it's a cool feature. I know what MLB is trying to do. But um, <laughs> at least, like, I don't know. I, I think it takes like the more part of the challenge out of it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm wording this right. But uh, I mean, the extra games. Yeah, I can see that taken off somewhere. And again, it's not that I, I. It's not that I don't hate. Like, I don't like it. It's mm-hmm. basically, it's just, I just got to get this, you know, whole thing, let it all sink in. At least to me. But 
I don't know. I mean, I could be wording it wrong. We can admit that Kyle's just, he's fine with it to a point because the yeah. Dodgers are still in it. <laughs> no, I meant like, you know, as a baseball fan by itself. You know, well, here's, uh, yeah, here's the your, thing. If your Dodger would have been out, it's like, oh, it sucks. <laughs> no, I wouldn't be. I, I was still, as like an unbiased <laughs> baseball fan, I probably would be saying the same thing. Here's the thing that with, with COVID, it's probably going to change next year because I know the commissioner was saying he wants to dabble in this particular playoff format with an adjustment or he wants to remove the, the whole top two C or top number one seed to have to play in the three game series. He'd rather do the two wild card players go off um, against whoever it is in their seeding and they face each other in the three game series. Three game series, I think, is, is a good adjustment because every single fan base, including the A's, who actually managed to get through, but now they're getting their asses handed by the, the Astros. At Dodger um, Stadium, out of all places. Yeah. <laughs> which is the irony of that, which I know has uh -huh. bad memories from 2017. But, but the thing is, though, is that the A's fans, I think, are always thinking, oh my gosh, this is such a stupid system. We always get in the wild card, and then we always get, lose the Yankees or somebody in that one-game playoff. And Just imagine if in. it was a one-game playoff, like Oakland against the uh, Chicago White Sox. They would have been out. It would They would have yeah. been done. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. but then the thing is, though, is that these teams, uh, these teams have another shot, so they don't have to burn their their number one starter in the first in that one game, and then go into a divisional series against a, a better team with their mm -hmm. ace going against their number two. Yeah, it makes it true. I mean, I mean that that it, it's it's a game and it's a game of adjustments. That's what baseball is. It's a game of adjustments. But and the purist is always going to say, you know what, this format's kind of stupid. For this year, it actually makes sense because of COVID, obviously. Mm -hmm. They want to well, make it fair for all the teams that yeah. you know, well, qualify. Didn't they say they were the players were asking them to look at a better <laughs> schedule for next year to <clears throat> shorten the amount of games? Because if you yeah. look at their season versus, say, football or basketball, they are gone from right. home way more than the other teams are. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that would be part of the adjustment of the playoff schedule, too, is that if they're going to keep with this kind of format where they have three games first round, um, divisional series, I would think, should be seven games to make it fair, and it's, it should be three seven seven seven. That would make it even more rewarding for the the team that survived that three game series to be able to have a fair chance to go. Okay, we lost the first two games. We can still we still have a few more games to, to you know get our butts together. Um, like I mean, you see what's happening to Houston and, and the A's right now. The A's are one game away from being eliminated after they. Mm -hmm. They, they beat the, the White Sox in that three-game playoff. Um, mm -hmm. but... Actually, I was looking at chat here. Bloody <laughs> actually kind of makes a good point, though. Like, instead of, like, cardboard cutouts, they should take a page out of WWE's book and then put a bunch of screens, like a virtual audience, yeah. around the, uh, the you know, the, the stands. So oh, that that's not... to, a, to a point, though. Yeah, to a point, it, though. With the stands, the stands, it, I mean, it works for WWE because they're inside an indoor stadium and they're in a Thunderdome where they can afford to put all these millions and millions of LED TVs mm -hmm. um, all over the place. AE, uh, not AEW. Well, actually, yeah, AEW and NXT have both kind of expanded on that, where they mm -hmm. have people in people in the stands. AEW has gotten smart. They have a select amount of people in a stadium that bought tickets to go there, I mean, to see this live. Whereas mm -hmm. I think other people, they don't have the, the whole LED thing. If WWE, and in this case, baseball, uses where they use, let's just say the people that are the big season ticket holders, they're behind the backstop. So you put this, those season ticket holders with their faces on a TV right there. I don't know how they would pull it off, but they put it in that specific section. And everyone else who's got the cheapos t uh, tickets, I mean... They're they're normal. They're like the well, they're like up at the upper deck or something. <laughs> if the stadium has cool. an upper deck, that'd be because I would... cardboard. The cardboard thing doesn't make it fun. And if you're on TV, you can sit there. Look, mom, I'm on TV. <laughs> yeah, the cardboard like, make it. Fit. I don't know how you. Somebody made it. Like, somebody made a joke. I've watched the cardboard cutouts just look creepy to me. No, somebody made a joke, like, on, I guess it was, like, during a game. It's like, uh, I guess, I don't know, remember who it was. I wasn't so sure who, on, like, who said it, but uh, I guess somebody was uh, doing batting practice, like, and was hitting home runs, like, against the cardboard cutouts. I guess they were kind of, like, messing around with them. Somebody said it was, like, taking out clowns at a carnival. That was, like, I was just, like, that kind of raised a lot of controversy, though, because, uh, some people could be offended, like, their cardboard cutout was actually on there, and they could have been hitting, like, their face, which was, you know, which raised the controversy. And... Yeah, but, I mean, I know what they're they're talking about. They're, they're 
They're talking about the um the game where you have to hit the cardboard cutouts of the clown heads. Yeah. So I know what they're talking about, but it was just a bad problem, way of putting it. Well, the problem you have today, like we've said so many times, and it is some of you are so thin skinned that they will purpose they like literally take everything out of context and like I'm offended, he called my face a clown. No, he's mm -hmm. talking about the cutout itself, not the picture of the person on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why it raised a lot of controversy, and that's where that's where we just tell you guys right now. People get offended over, easily over you know the slightest things. I ice cream. Oh, hi, Alex, the <laughs> realest of MVP. He says hi to me with the star of the podcast. Shout penguin? out to a. Uh... Hi, Kyle Penguin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Kyle Penguin, and, and there it is, boys hi, and girls. Oh man, but uh, yeah, that's just our two cents on it. But anyways, it is time for me yeah. to go eat. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know we were away for you know a few weeks, but we're going to be back with more shows once a week. So, not going anywhere. So Getting that is hyped uh, for the, the the PC version. Are we going to all the, the PC streams? Is, are we going to be doing PC streams for the the kennel cast? How you pronounce it? Sorry, I always. Oh, uh, we'll we'll figure that out as soon as I talk to chaotic. We'll Whee! definitely get that figured out as uh, soon as we go. Discord audio. All right. <laughs> So well, I'm, we're going to get there. We're going to hopefully get there. But uh, anyways. The, for, for, the, the one thing I'm still waiting on is for when we all get into Among Us and how toxic the fun does. Oh, oh, dear God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get oh, so toxic yeah. on that game. You have no idea. It's, but it's, it's, have, uh, I, I will get it. I will get it for sure. But we will, anyways. We will master ability to lie for sure. Oh, oh you oh, guys, you you guys haven't it, seen me so yet. I might just get to <laughs> yeah. see you, Kyle. Oh, no, full oh crap. I, I, you don't have to do that. I appreciate it's, that. It's five bucks. It's not like it's a million dollars. <laughs> I know. Let's, I know. All, let's all give them five <laughs> bucks and buy it right now. <laughs> Alrighty, but again, thank you guys so much. And if you guys are watching this on the YouTube side, which will probably be up again by Thursday, uh, hit that like, subscribe, turn on those post notifications. You never know. We may do a... Uh, uh, We'll, but we'll do a Nintendo stream on YouTube one of these days. You never know. But then again, YouTube is kind of, you know, pretty strict with Nintendo streams. So I definitely got to be on the lookout there. But anyways, uh, on that note, thank you guys for tuning in. And I will see you guys next week for the podcast. But if you guys are watching this, you know, on Twitch, we'll be live tomorrow with a certain game, maybe a horror game. We'll try to keep the uh, tradition going with the October uh, horror month. We don't, I don't know what exactly yet, but uh We'll figure something out, and my arm is hurting from pointing at the camera, so I better put it down. So, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. I'll see you. <laughs> anyways, to catch you guys later. Hashtag Pug Bark. Bye. Bye.